I would like to talk about blue tongue. Little is known about blue tongue, the media haven't really uh, got hold of it yet, which I'm quite fortunate because uh, they usually whip up hysteria, hysteria in this country. Um, blue tongue has the potential to decimate the livestock industry in this country. It affects cattle, sheep, uh, camels, goats and llamas. Um, it's very serious, there are actually, it's not actually one form of virus, there are 26 different strains of it. We have one in this country at the moment uh, which uh, reached the UK and affected East Anglia last year and that's strain 8. Yesterday I gave my cattle the first uh, of a two-part vaccination for strain 8. I've now got to wait a further three weeks um, before I can give them their second booster and then three weeks after that and they'll be covered, so we're looking at mid-June before I'm actually safe. Um, the midge that causes uh, uh, blue tongue isn't your ordinary uh, midge. The midge actually lives on dung heaps, uh, overwinters on dung heaps because they're nice and warm. Unfortunately, because I'm organic, I need to compost my uh, dung for six months before I spread it, so it means I'm always going to have a dung heap, which is a little bit of a worry. Um, what facts about blue tongue? It's a horrible disease and I really wouldn't want any of my cattle to get it. Uh, in sheep it has a 33% mortality rate. The statistic is that in Belgium on the first year when it uh, hit Belgium it killed 100 sheep. What it does, it sort of established itself in the first year and the second year it wiped out a third of their national uh, flock. That was 100,000 sheep. Uh, in cattle it only has a 2% mortality but, uh, rate, but like any other disease, nasty disease that attacks you, your body isn't going to be the same afterwards and you're going to um, uh, take a long time to recover from it. The first thing that happens uh, if you're a milking herd, um, your milk yield will drop straight off the record sort of thing. Um, the cows get a very high fever, they then get uh, sores around their nose and excessive, um, excessive uh, mucus production. Uh, they can get uh, sores on the hard palate of their mouths. Teeth, uh, cows only have teeth on the bottom of their uh, bottoms of their mouths and they crush their grass against their hard palate. But of course if that gets, um, if that gets uh, sore and there's ulcers and sores on it then of course they stop feeding. They get sores on their feet so they're reluctant to move around, um, they can't stand up and in severe cases uh, they get pus filled uh, joints so they definitely can't stand up and they basically waste away. If a cow has blue tongue and survives it uh, it's never the same again from what I've heard. Um, if, uh, if she's uh, not in calf it would be very difficult to get her in calf. Um, if she is in calf she will, uh, she will abort the calf, a miscarriage. So, and uh, if they're just beef animals they won't put on even any weight and they'll just um, be a very miserable animal. So what do we do about it? Well, this is the vaccine I was using yesterday. Let me have a close up there. That's what I've got left. This is a very delicate vaccine. I wouldn't be using a full bottle of uh, vaccine. It has to be stored at between uh, eight, no, two and eight degrees in the fridge any warmer and it stops working. So when you're using it you have to have a uh, cooler box nearby so every time you stop or pause you shove it in the cooler box to keep warm. Um, in the fridge at those temperatures it will keep for up to a year but uh, once opened the vaccine would then be uh, dead within um, eight hours. So once you decide you're going to vaccinate your herd you really do have to. I bought a useful little gizmo. Hang on, I'll get it. I administer it with this. This is called the Sterimatic Injection System. If I was using a normal uh, injection system, uh, uh, a normal injection, if I was injecting my cattle normally, I would use a new needle for every single beast I injected so you didn't spread disease or infection and everything was hygienic. But this is very clever. 
The needle is actually housed in this. That is the one mil dose that I administered to my cattle. That bit, that bit, oh God, I can't see. That bit plugs on to the, uh, uh, to the bottle and I keep it raised so it keeps filling. Right, what happens is you press that against the cow and the needle pops out like that. But this bit on the end, this white bit, is actually disinfectant. So every time the needle pops out like that and goes back in, it has been disinfected, so I will not pass anything on to the next animal that I inject. And then once you've pressed that against the animal, you just squeeze the trigger, plunger comes down, and you've administered your dose. It's very simple. It's a subcutaneous, uh, injection so what you do and um, that means under the skin and not into the muscle so what you do you go up to their neck and you get a great big bit of skin uh, you pull it away from their bodies you stick that on press it in inject them that's that's the job done so here we have this very easy device it's um, it's uh, very easy to use um, it's slightly a hassle but um, I don't want any of my animals to actually catch this disease. But there's a lot of farmers out there going, I'm not going to bother with the uh, expense of vaccinating my cattle. And all I can say is, how short-sighted is that? Um, once they're, once they're uh, done for uh, strain eight, then they're covered and they're safe and you're not going to lose them. I wouldn't like any animal to actually suffer from the symptoms of the disease that I've seen. Uh, that I've seen. Um, admittedly, every single one of the different 26 strains needs a different vaccine, but we'll come to that one when we come to it. Um, I think the real shame is that my veterinary practice has provided me with the serum at cost, cost price. Um, it cost me £168 to vaccinate my entire herd, and that was 90, 90 animals or so. So, but I've heard some veterinaries are putting on between 25 and 50% uh, markup on the serum. And all I can say to you is shame on you, shame. How disgusting to be profiteering from something that can wreck an industry. The livestock industry isn't particularly buoyant with uh, our own government infecting us with foot and mouth last year. So why not provide it at a cost for your poor struggling farmers? Anyway, so that's the blue tongue story. Um, let's hope we don't get it. Um, let's see. So, okay, bye bye.